I want to preface that this episode will be a little different from the usual stories I tell. Recently, I have been dealing with the grief of having to have said goodbye to our beloved dog, Joni. Having to make the decision to end her suffering and go through the process of euthanizing our companion has been one of the hardest things my wife and I had to do. We compassionately decided a while ago that as soon as her medical issues affected her quality of life, we wouldn't make her endure any suffering. I know comparatively speaking that the loss of a pet isn't as bad as what some people have to go through in some parts of the world. But what I have come to realise is that grief, no matter what or who it's over, is always hard. Having always been fascinated with the paranormal and what happens to us when we pass on from this world, finding stories about people's encounters with what they believe to be the spirits of their past pets has strangely given me some comfort. So, as a way to honour Joni, I wanted to present you with three of the stories I found. Welcome to Deliver Us. Tim Delaney was wide awake with a sense of responsibility one warm summer night. It was midnight and time for his daughter's round-the-clock medication. She had come down with a staph infection. As he was in the kitchen preparing the syringe, he heard what sounded like the rattle of tags dangling from a dog's collar. The family dog, a husky named Jacob, was free to roam the house at night so he didn't think anything of it. Tim left the kitchen and went to his daughter's bedroom to administer her medication and returned to the kitchen to clean up. As he was there, he felt his dog lean up against his leg. Without looking, he bent down to stroke his dog's head. But as he did so, he quickly became aware that the fur he was feeling was different from that of his husky. It was at this point that he remembered Jacob didn't wear tags as he kept tearing them off, so what he was hearing earlier couldn't have been him walking around. Tim looked down at the dog he was stroking, and, clear as day, he saw not Jacob, but Bella, his German shepherd who he had had to say goodbye to several months before. At this moment, she looked much younger and healthier than how he remembered she was at the end of her life. He stood there in disbelief, full of emotion, not wanting this moment of being reunited with his since-past companion to end. Tears filled his eyes and forced him to blink. As he did so, Bella disappeared. Tim took in his surroundings to try to establish whether or not he was dreaming. Everything around him was as real as it ever was. His daughter eventually recovered from her condition. With the emotions that can fill the parent of a sick child, and with how often our fairy companions will comfort us when we are feeling anxious, it made sense that Bella would return to Tim to comfort him during this difficult time. Josh Bradley was in his early twenties and lived with his parents and two dogs, Willow, a lab husky mix, and Casey, a shih tzu. Casey was getting older, and it was showing. He was moving slower and started showing signs of dementia. It's always hard for pet lovers when the realisation that their furry companions won't be around much longer. We hope the inevitable day will be put off for as long as possible. Although Casey's vet visits were becoming more frequent, the family were confident that with the correct treatments, he would be around for a bit longer. Josh came home from work one day, and Casey did his usual routine of getting up to come and greet him. As he got up, however, he fell and wasn't able to get himself back up again. They had a vet appointment booked for Casey in a few days, so they decided to wait until then to take him to see what could have been wrong. He didn't seem to be in any pain. Josh went to bed that night and carried Casey up with him, as he always slept in his bed. Snoring during sleep is common for Shih Tzus, and Casey was no exception. The sound of Casey's snoring was always a comfort to Josh and helped him sleep at night. So although he was deeply concerned about the condition of his dog, when he heard him snore, he felt comforted and drifted off to sleep. Josh woke in the middle of the night and lay there for a moment wondering what it was that had disturbed his sleep. It gradually dawned on him that it wasn't a sound, more the absence of it. He realised he could no longer hear the sound of Casey snoring. He reached over, turned his bedside lamp on, looked down at Casey and saw what he feared the most. 
Casey, had passed away in his sleep. Devastated, Josh woke his parents, and that night they wrapped Casey's body up in his favourite blanket and buried him in the garden. They went back to their beds, but no one slept that night. I think the hardest thing about losing a pet is that when they are alive, they become a part of your everyday routine. They are there when you wake up, and with you until you retire at the end of the day. Then, all of a sudden, they are gone, and you are constantly reminded of their loss by the fact that what has been your daily routine for the past however many years is no longer there. The night following that difficult first day for Josh, he knew despite his exhaustion, he was never going to sleep that easily, so took some melatonin to aid his rest. He slept through the night without dreaming. He woke the next morning to a familiar sound that he gradually realised he should no longer be hearing. The sound of Casey snoring. He lay there for a moment, trying to rationalise where the sound must be coming from. He looked around to see if Willow, his other dog, was in the room. He couldn't see her, and even if she was, the snoring he heard was definitely that of Casey's. He lay back down, and comforted by what he was hearing, he drifted back off to sleep. Casey, it would seem, came back to visit Josh one last time after departing this world. After we said goodbye to our dog, our vet assisted us with getting her cremated. We have her ashes in a nicely carved box on a shelf in the living room, and some in specially designed memorial keychains. It is difficult when you have to come to terms with the fact that the beautiful creature that brought you so much happiness is now reduced to a box of ashes. A harsh reality all pet owners have to face in life. Anna Herman had recently said goodbye to her 14-year-old dog Cubby and returned home from the vet several days later with Cubby's ashes in an urn. Devastated with the loss of her beloved pet, she felt the need to busy herself with something to take her mind off the grief and decided to head out to the garden to mow her lawn. She got on her ride on mower and started with the perimeter of the garden. She wasn't long into the chore when she noticed something moving in the corner of her eye. She turned to look and saw her cubby running across the lawn. Without even thinking, she got off the mower and instinctively ran to catch her. When she was alive, Cubby had a tendency to run off when she saw someone in the garden. Before she started to run for the dog, it dawned on her that it couldn't have been Cubby, and at some point what she was seeing was no longer there. Cubby was slower in her old age, so she would never have been able to move at the speed she saw her running. It then dawned on her that the dog she saw looked like Cubby when she was younger. Anna considered herself agnostic and a non-believer in the idea of ghosts, but with how vividly she saw Cubby, it has made us seriously consider the possibilities of what is beyond this life. Thank you for indulging me with these stories. I hope listening to them hasn't made you too emotional. I do want to leave you with these final thoughts. It was somewhat unexpected that we had to say goodbye to our dog Joni. And the main thing I struggled with was not having done enough in the last remaining hours she was with us. I should have cuddled and held her more. I should have told her how much she meant to me, how pretty she was, and how much of a good girl she had been in the time she was with me, even though she was pretty cheeky a lot of the time. The thing is, whatever I did was never going to be enough, and sadly, the death of our beloved pets is an inevitability we all have to face. I understand why people decide never to adopt again when going through this, for the primary reason of never wanting to experience the pain ever again. I have, however, started to find comfort in remembering all the times I was fully present with Joni. All the times she would wake me in the night to get some water, or to be let outside, and I would help her without getting frustrated. The times she would take forever to decide where to go to the bathroom, and I would wait patiently for her. More recently, the times I would not be able to sleep at night due to some form of anxiety, and I would lie there comforted by the fact that she was laying next to me, and we were spending that particular moment together. My journey with mindfulness these past few years hasn't miraculously changed my life, but it has made me more of a patient and present person, attributes that come naturally to animals. I am finding comfort in realising that in the years she was a part of my life, I did cherish every moment I had with her, and I gave her the best life she could have had. Life is hard. 
and the people and animals we connect with to make it easier are gifts we need to be grateful for. My intent with this episode was not to make you emotional, but to urge you to be present, patient, and grateful for all the moments you have with those you love, as one day, as we all know, it will end. On a lighter note, my wife and I did decide that one of the best ways to honour Joni's life was to rescue two new dogs. With the amount of love we have to give to dogs, it wouldn't be fair leaving our home empty when we could save the lives of two of these wonderful creatures that have sadly been abandoned by their previous owners. Our lives have changed considerably, as we have gone from a mostly calm Yorkie to a rambunctious plot hound and border collie mix, but they are filling our lives with a ton of joy. You can follow these two puppies and their antics on Instagram, at rescue.sisters. Thank you for listening to this episode. I shall be back soon with more of my usual content.